Welcome to Worthington Home. I'm Chris. We had a very interesting weekend and I've been looking forward to telling you about it. On Friday, my husband and I decided to go to an estate sale in Weathersfield. We have not been to an estate sale in a long time, but this one looked really good. It was widely advertised as a collector slash hoarder's house. And there were lots of pictures filled with all kinds of interesting old objects, old books and beautiful glassware and lamps and all kinds of really interesting things. So we decided to go. And I should also mention, I've never been to an estate sale on the first day, which is usually a Friday, because I've always been working. Um, I have a flexible job now. I work from home and I have flexible hours. So it was possible. So we thought, why not? So the sale started at nine o'clock and we got there at 8.30. There were cars lined up and down the street as far as the eye could see. So clearly lots of people thought there were interesting things that were in the pictures and wanted to check out the sale. We parked really far away and we thought, uh-oh, you know, this is maybe not a good sign in terms of being able to easily get into the house. We walked up and we put our name on a list and we were something like numbers 55 and 56. So not particularly low numbers. So we kind of thought, well, hopefully they'll let a lot of people in at a time and it will move pretty fast, but they only let 15 people in at a time. And that was actually a good thing because the house was pretty small and there were so many like tables and stacks of things everywhere. If you had had more people than that, it would have been impossible to even move and things would have gotten broken and people would have gotten annoyed. So that was the right thing to do, but it was hard to wait, especially because it was really cold. Um, so I'm gonna show you a couple quick clips. If my nose looks all red, it's because I am outside and it's really cold. It's 35 degrees. <laughs> I'm trying to get into an estate sale and there are many people ahead of me. So I decided to come back and try to warm up in the car until my time is here. My husband's still outside waiting. So he's gonna let me know when we're a little closer. How do we look? Look pretty, beautiful. Pretty <laughs> So after we had waited for about two hours, we finally got in. We, we thought a couple of times about just leaving and there were people that did just leave. Um, and I kept moving the car closer and closer to get closer to the house. It made me feel like I was accomplishing something. So anyway, we finally got in. Um, and yeah, clearly there were lots of really good things in the house, but nothing was marked with the price tag. You had no idea what things cost. And one guy who had left the house, who had gotten in and left before we even got in, had said, just so you know, folks, this is a full retail situation. So a lamp that a lot of people were there to see, it was a slag glass lamp, really fabulous lamp, was being offered at $750. And that's okay if you're in an antique store, but at an estate sale, you know, you expect some deals, you expect to be able to do some haggling, uh, so anyway, I, I went through um, the rooms. There were bedrooms. There was an attic filled with stuff. I really couldn't take a lot of footage for you because there were so many people and it was so tight. Um, and I didn't want to be disrespectful and, you know, take people that didn't want that. And, you know, that can get a little odd. But I did hit one room where nobody was, that nobody was in in the moment. So I took some sneaky footage so I could at least give you a sense of things. Here it is. So anyway, um, the advertisements that we had read all said, don't bring back bags or boxes, like they're not allowed but everybody had bags and boxes with them and they were allowed. Fortunately, I had some bags in my car and you had to have them because if you are gathering up a lot of things, you can only hold so much. So I found lots of really interesting glassware. I tried to very carefully like put it in between like blankets and scarves and things so that it wouldn't get damaged. 
I got to the line and I didn't even see like the dining room or the kitchen. I had to stop what I was doing because my bag was getting so big and so heavy and I didn't want to knock into people. I was in this very long line to get to the cashier and I just was thinking like, what is taking so long? Like, why isn't this line just moving? It was, it was unusual. Again, I've been to estate sales before. So I got to my turn and it became evident that the person in charge of the sale was pricing things in the moment because nothing had price tags and the prices were really, really high. So people were actually saying, well, I'm not going to take that. You can put that back. Um, the person in charge would not haggle on prices at all. He kept saying, nope, it's the first day um, or take it or leave it. He was very brusque. So, um, there was no haggling. There was no bundling. There was no, like, it was what it was. It was the price, except nobody knows the price. And of course, and in those situations, you also don't know if somebody's like looking you up and down and making decisions about what you can afford. I mean, I hope that wasn't happening. You know, I'm maybe being paranoid, but you know, one never knows. So what he was doing was he was literally, I'm going to use my case. He was literally like, you would give him an item and say, well, what does this cost? And he'd look it up and he'd go, $25. And you'd be like, well, would you take 24? Nope, take it or leave it first day. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. So I ended up putting back, well, I didn't, I gave it to them. I just said, I'm not gonna take it. Probably 70% of what I came to the line for, I ended up not taking because the prices were ridiculous. Um, and that was really frustrating, but it didn't stop me from taking the things that I did get. And I did get some decent prices on things. Brought everything to the car, I came back in, um, so I could look at items in the dining room and the kitchen. And I did pick up a few more things. Actually, I didn't even buy them because I had to leave. It was taking so long and I had plans with a friend to have lunch. So my husband stood, stood in line for me and was able to actually get those remaining things that I wanted. It seemed like maybe it was the person in charge was getting a little more flexible at that point. But I did pick up some interesting things. I paid a little bit for them, but that's okay. So I want to show you what I got. The first thing I saw, and I just beelined to it, was a section of, oh, sorry, was a section with books because I love books. And there weren't a lot of books that were um, the kind that I collect. They weren't super old. It's like a lot of books from like the 50s and 60s. Um, no dust covers, no dust jackets. And I, I like the dust jackets myself. Some people don't care about them. They were meant to be thrown away, really. But I like them. So I <clears throat> came across four Nancy Drew books that were all first editions with the dust cover. So I was really excited to find those um, because I, I have lots of um, first edition Nancy Drews, but none of mine have the dust cover. I paid $5 each for these. In the same room, I picked up two Delft pieces this pretty tray with the braided handle. And this vase with the windmill. And there's the, there's the signature. So these are just for me. I was glad to have them. I can't tell you how much I paid for them because I just don't remember and I didn't have the tags to inform me, but they were in the like $10 to $15 range, which was fine. Then I picked up again in the same room, this pretty carved wooden box. Made in India. I just paid a couple of dollars for this, but I thought it was cute. And I also found this great oval platter. There was actually a bigger one, but it was cracked, which was a shame. This was made called the Olympic and the pattern is Lily. And as part of that same pattern, there's this covered vegetable dish, which is really nice and in perfect condition. Same, part of the same pattern. And I think it looks, personally, I think it looks very Art Nouveau. 
which would place it at the early 1900s. I just love the flower details. I thought they were really pretty. And the cover does have some crazing, but that's okay with something that old. I found this pretty picture in the attic. Doesn't it have a nice design to it? It's a very lustrous finish. I don't know if this is technically luster wear or not. It was made in Japan. I really like the handle. Look at how there's like this indent and then the handle comes out. Really pretty, again, not a particularly valuable piece, but I thought it was really charming. And again, I only paid a few dollars for it. Also in the attic, I found this really charming teapot. I love this little guy, a little lid that comes off. And this piece, is made in England, but it's not otherwise signed. At least I couldn't find another mark or stamp on it, but I'll look a little bit more closely later. But I thought it was absolutely adorable. I found a beautiful old slip. It looks like it was handmade. It is so pretty. Let me show you how pretty it is. Look at that pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? It's in this very sort of satiny fabric and let me tell you whoever was wearing this sucker was tiny i think maybe it would fit my pinky finger if i went on a diet for a year um then i went into the kitchen this was my second time after i had gone back to the car and come out again <clears throat> i went to the kitchen and i found this old glass bake um, measuring cup and i liked it because i loved the d handle and I also really liked the spout. I don't think, I don't know how well you could tell, but it's a little different from the Pyrex um, measuring cups. You usually see the shape of it was a little bit different. So I thought it was really cute. It is marked, <clears throat> excuse me, Glass Bake USA. And I don't know if I'm gonna sell this one or keep it. I haven't decided yet. Similarly, <clears throat> I got this white and black enamel wear measuring cup with no chips or cracks or any kind of damage to the enamel, which is really unusual with enamel wear. I love enamel wear, but it is pretty fragile. This goes up to 82 ounces or a thousand cc's. So I thought that was a great piece. I am going to sell this piece. I was originally going to keep it, but I think I could get a little bit of money for it. I picked up this guide on depression glass that has some like really good color illustrations. Color illustrations are so important to me when I'm um, using a reference book about glass because, you know, a big part of how you can identify things is through the color. So this book will be great to look through. I am looking forward to spending some time with it. And I think my favorite purchase was <clears throat> these mixing bowls in the poppy pattern. Let me show you one at a time. I'll show you the little guy. <clears throat> Sorry about my, <laughs> my throat clearing situation. I don't know if you can see the great lines on this. They're really wonderful. This is by Halls. Halls Kitchenware, made in the USA. And it's funny because now that I've actually seen some Hall's kitchenware up close, I'm starting to identify it out in other places because the shape is, is actually easy to pick up. But I love these, they're mixing bowls. There's three of them. <clears throat> Here's the medium size one. And here is the large one. They're pretty heavy actually. And no nicks, chips, cracks, nothing. They're in good condition and I will be selling these on my eBay store. We seriously considered going back to the sale on the third day because the third day is the best day to go to estate sales from a price perspective. I mean, obviously on the third day, things are very picked over, so you don't have as much to choose from, but that's usually when you can do some negotiating and haggling. That said, our feeling was, well, there still won't be prices on things, so how do you negotiate when you don't even know what the price is until you get there and you're working with the person who is maybe in the mood to negotiate and maybe not in the mood to negotiate? 
So we decided just to pass on it um, and just, you know, say good enough. It was a fun experience. We probably would be disinclined to go first thing in the morning to an estate sale again. It was very chaotic and time consuming, but it was a learning experience. And um, I did, as you saw for yourself, I picked up some interesting things. So not a waste of a day. I don't know if you can hear my dog destroying her toy in the background. But anyway, after the estate sale, I met my friend for lunch in New Haven we had a really nice meal, a nice time, and then afterwards I stopped off at a Goodwill and picked up a few more things. Unfortunately, I don't have much footage to share with you because my camera was about to die and then it did. But here's what I can show you and I'm sorry there isn't more. So I was so thrilled that this picture was still there because I was really kicking myself for not having picked it up the last time I was there. You might've seen that if you saw my last vlog. The dogs are tap dancing now. It's like a crazy house here. I apologize. But I was so happy it was still there and it's in great condition. And what I didn't know because the price tag was blocking it is that Traditions is a Christopher Radko pattern. And I didn't know that. So now I have the picture that matches the glasses that I also picked up. And I was so glad to have this. I bought these two white soup bowls <clears throat> just for my own use. They're really nothing special. They're just the, the right size. What the heck are you doing out there? Oh, she's got something she shouldn't have. Let me go check that out. Oh, this is delightful. My dog got a hold of a bunch of painter's tape that my husband was using for a project and decided to eat it. Such is the life of a dog owner. Okay, usually when I do these videos, the cats are crazy and create mayhem and today the dogs are having a turn. So I don't know, at least they're good at sharing. Anyway, I bought these two soup mugs. I also bought uh, a little um, planter uh, that I think was nothing, nothing, it's definitely nothing old. It looked like something that would maybe came from Home Goods um, or Target, um, but I'll show it to you now. Here it is. Just a little planter. Again, nothing old, nothing super special, but I had this Christmas cactus just in its like little black plastic container, which is really ugly. And now it has this nice container. So happy to have that. Um, I found this great straw bag in really good condition. It was $4.99. It has this really pretty blue striped lining. It's very clean. It is Talbot's. It was made by Talbot's. I don't know if you can see that. It has these cute little fringe pieces on it as well. So I thought that would be a great summer bag. And I also thought this would be a great summer bag. This is an Et Etienne Agne. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's a great summer bag. It has some white leather details, nice canvas exterior. Inside, it's nice and clean. And this bag was $4.99. And I don't know, are you familiar with the brand Bagolini? I know this doesn't look that exciting, but if you are a traveler, if you traveler to other countries and states or just a day trip traveler, these bags are so good. I have two of them. I have a black one myself and a green one, and I use them constantly. They're so great because they have lots of little pockets and zippers, lots of little, see how you can put like your credit cards and your cash in here. This one has a card in it, that's funny. Um, zippered compartments. So you really don't even need a wallet when you carry this and it's so light. But you could put a water bottle in here and if it spills, it doesn't matter. These are totally machine washable. In fact, I'm gonna wash this one. You can adjust the straps so you can wear it however you like it. I love to wear crossbody bags when I'm out and about. So I would wear this one like this. 
then I decided to head over to Savers. And um, by then my phone was, it was thoroughly dead. So I have nothing to show you from Savers. I'm gonna have to do better about keeping my phone charged, but I will show you what I picked up. I got this fantastic ruby red depression glass dish. It is so pretty. You're getting lots of glare. Can you see the pretty details? I think you can maybe see them if I go like this. I love this piece and all of the scalloped edging and there's no cracks in this. And here is the bottom. So I was really glad to find that. I bought this piece of ruby red depression glass as well. This is not um, worth quite as much as the platter. It's a pretty common piece, but I really liked it. And so I decided to pick it up. Two more things that I bought for myself. I got this little toolbox so that I could store actually some like craft supplies and things in it. I don't think it's especially old. And also for my own use, the dog has painter's tape stuck to her foot. It's very dignified. Um, I bought this little tin uh, for my own use, um, just because I can put candies or cookies or things in here. And I always kind of look out for a pretty tin. I don't think this is old in any way. This was made in France. I just like the little Dutch cover or the Dutch image on the front. Thought it was really cute. And I bought this tin that is worth a little more and I'm gonna sell. This one was made in England. And it's really pretty and it is hinged. So here's the inside of it as well. So this one I'm gonna sell, but it's a cute little piece. And one more little tin piece to show you. Sorry. Is this Waller's rum and butter tin. I need to take the price off. The price is $1.99. But I'm gonna sell this one. Isn't that a really cute piece? I think my favorite thing that I bought at Savers um, were these, these plastic nesting containers. I have all the lids, they're off right now, but that's the set. I love the pink color, it's Tupperware. Brings me right back to my childhood, although we did not have pink. And you can see there's a big one, there is a medium one, and then two smaller containers. And they all have their lids. This is what the bottom looks like. It's marked with the Tupperware stamp. And as I said, I have the lids. I'm still cleaning those, <clears throat> cleaning those up because they're a little bit dirty. But I thought this was a great piece. And again, I was excited because it was pink. I haven't often seen pink in my travels. I put my new Delft vase on the top shelf of my bookcase in the dining room. I think it looks really nice. You see the windmill pattern? And here we have another windmill pattern. And here we have another windmill pattern. So it fits in really nicely. And then I put the little um, basket right down here. Oh dear, what's the matter Iris? Okay, I, here's my plant in the new planter. I keep it in this hanging basket. So, oh, right, dear. So it will be away from uh, the cats. Here's the rest of the fruit we keep in there. I know that's pretty funny. And then if you keep going lower, this is the egg basket. We just gathered these eggs this morning. So I'll be washing those. Oh, honey, what is it? Oh my goodness. I wanted to show you how nice these bowls look in a kitchen environment where they really belong. Here's that little measuring cup. These are really great. I love them. I 
thought I would show you how lovely this ruby glass looks on a tablecloth. Isn't that pretty? I also wanted to show you how lovely this pretty set looks. Again, on a tablecloth where it belongs in a dining room, front and center. And see this piece has a lot of crazing around it, but it is very pretty. And here I have just one more little grouping. Just so we can get a sense of what these things might look like in somebody's home. This little trinket box is good for so many things. completely forgot to mention that I picked up this 26 piece punch set when I was at Savers. It's anchor hawking and it's in great shape. All the pieces are here. The box has seen better days, but there's the punch bowl and the ladle. And underneath are all of the cups. I need to seriously clean this sucker up but I will do that soon and this will go on eBay. I also wanna give you a little update on our staircase foyer project, which is coming along pretty well. You can see that my husband has knocked down the walls. These were old plaster walls in really bad repair. They were not worth saving. And also the plaster walls were from the 1920s or 30s. This house was totally, totally gutted in the 1920s or 30s. And that's when they added electricity and plumbing and all the things that we expect and rely on today. So here is the staircase. You can see we have all new stairs. He built all of these stairs. They're so nice and solid. They don't squeak anymore when you walk up them like the old ones do, did. Here's the banister, but it's obviously not finished. And he hasn't done the railing yet. He has replaced some of the broken spindles, but there's still some work to be done here. And this is the wall going all the way up. It's amazing, isn't it? These old boards that were used in old house construction. Look at my, this is my hand. So you can see how very wide these boards are. This is very old wood. You don't get this anymore. Take a peek at this old guy. If you've watched my vlogs before, you might have remembered my parlor transformation videos. So while we're under construction, you might like to see what the room is looking like now. Yikes. Here it is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's just basically a storage area. It's like, you know, you make an improvement to your house and something temporarily falls apart, but this is temporary and we are determined to not clutter up this foyer space because it's not very big and it really doesn't need any kind of furniture at all. So I can't wait to get to the decorating phase when we can figure out whether we're painting or putting up wallpaper. I have a few ideas for this old floor. Again, this is not the original floor to our 1700s house. This floor was put down in the 20s or 30s. So it's a good hundred years old, but not precious. I've been doing lots of listing for my eBay store, Worthington Home. And the lights I got, um, I recently purchased lights on Amazon so that I could take better pictures. I had mentioned that, I think it was in my last vlog. Anyway, they came in and they're working great. So I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of some of the items that are coming up in my next sale in case you're interested. All right, here is the next group of items going to my eBay online store, Worthington Home. These are gonna be available for buy it now or auction, uh, depending on the item, starting March 13th at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. 
So if there's something that you have your eye on, be sure to check out the sale. Or if you're just curious and feel like checking out the items and don't want to buy a thing, that's okay too. <laughs> Either way, I'll be glad for you to visit and stay a while. So it's early March in Connecticut and it is slowly but surely warming up and we're seeing some signs of spring. Of course, I'm saying that and tomorrow it could snow. I mean, that's just life in New England. However, even though it's kind of overcast and, you know, a little grim looking outside, it's actually quite warm. So I'm going to take a little walk. So if you'd like to come with me and see the neighborhood, please stay on. And if that's not your cup of tea today and you'd rather depart at this point, no hard feelings. Either way, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon and I hope you have a great day. Oh, please take a minute to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you soon, I hope. Bye. Okay, time to take a walk before it starts to rain because it looks like it really wants to, but the temperature is warm. So I'm gonna show you the neighborhood and if you stay until the end, I'm gonna introduce you to the girls. <laughs> This is where my father-in-law lives. He lives on the first floor and we rent out the second floor. And it has this great wraparound porch. And over here you can see our barn. And there's our house. <clears throat> we live in a historic district, which is really nice because all the houses here are really old and interesting. It's a busy road. A trolley used to go down this road and the trolley station is still here at the end of the road, although of course it's a house now. There's a pretty little park right over here. I don't know if you can see it too well. Let's zoom in. There it is. It really, the temperature is fabulous. I am so sick of the winter, and the good news is it's coming to an end. Another pretty old house. It looks like this house is getting a lot of repair work done. You can see some scaffolding and some paint. This house re recently sold. Oh, check out this excellent overhang for the car park. It's pretty cool, huh? I'm told that back in the day, not that big a day, about 15 or so years ago, I'm told that this house sold for a song. I would love to see the inside of it. Here's a nice Greek revival house, and this is the library. It's not the main town library anymore. It only has very limited hours, but a group of dedicated volunteers keep it going because of its interesting history. Here's a better way. It's called the Berlin Free Library. It's a beautiful old building. Interestingly, the Berlin Free Library used to be located right next door to us, but it was taken down remember when maybe it was the 50s I don't know it was taken down for some reason so now we have an empty space where the library would have been we have a sad friend in the background Here's another beautiful old house with a covered porch. Here's another old house with a covered porch. Are you sensing a theme around here? And check out this big building. I'm gonna stop and take a close up for you. This is the old town hall and it's now owned by the Historical Society and they've been working on renovations in this old building. 
want to restore it and make it a useful property again it really is a beautiful old building i think it's from the 1700s here's a close-up of it they also own this little white house right next to it and they take donations i've donated to them before if you'd like to learn more about this interesting old building i'll provide you with some information in the text box and in the description so you can check it out if you want look can you believe it another covered porch i want to show you this little house because it has a great fan light stained glass and you can't tell now but these little viney trees i think they might be wisteria but they bloom in the spring and the summer and it's just lovely well somebody's getting rid of a bureau let's cross the street are you in the market for a bureau Here's a pretty rough looking one for you. Yeah, I think we're gonna give it a pass. This is the post office where all of our eBaying is sent out to be delivered. The postman is so, so nice and very funny actually. I'm gonna show you this fabulous war memorial. It was designed by N.A. Moore, who is the painter that we collect. Well, we don't collect the painter, we collect his paintings. really pretty memorial in the spring and summer and fall. It was erected in 1920. Oh, here's the plaque. It's a beautiful spot. And back here, there's this little walkway and it gets covered with wisteria and blooms and it's beautiful and it smells so good. I'll show it to you, although it's not very nice this time of year. <clears throat> Some more old plaques. It really is a beautifully done space inside and take a peek. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of this guy. Isn't that great? In case you want a better look. Oh, 1942 it says. the other side of the little breezeway. Everything turns this color green after the winter, but I'm sure the committee that keeps it clean will take care of that when the time is right. There's another memorial. Yeah, I think it's just a really special place. really like the color of this house. Built in 1800. Here's a better shot, the library. <laughs> Let's see what the plaque says. They're not open right now. It was built in 1949. It's a beautiful window. If you're wondering about the Connecticut peddler or Yankee peddler, Here's where it started. Here's another shot of the old church. It's very big. It keeps going um, back and back. 
Here's another piece of furniture somebody's given away. I'm sensing a theme today, are you? Little chest of drawers. And across the way there is a very sad looking table. Interesting. There's our two family house that was built in 1899. There's our house was built in the 1700s. I think our house is the oldest, certainly one of the oldest on the street. Of course, fires took a lot of them. There's lots more to see if we keep going up the street, like an old general store that now is a private home, the trolley station that's now a home, like I told you, and this beautiful old cemetery with stones going all the way back to the 1600s. It's a really cool place. But I promised to show you the girls and I always keep my promises. And here they are waiting for you. The girls. Say hi, girls. <clears throat> Say hello. They're just hanging out. Boy, could their coop and run use a good clean. It's very ready for a nice deep spring clean, but we'll give it just a little bit more time before that happens. This is the house that used to be a general store. It is such a great old building. Hey, Wilson, did you miss us? Yeah? You good boy. So, that's it. That was our little walk. I hope you enjoyed it. And I wanna thank you so much if you stayed with me till the end. I hope you enjoyed meeting the girls and I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you have a great day.